Oh, hi, Throttlers. It's Aristotle Full Throttle, and I've got a special guest with me today, Sean Troke, or Shawniwa. He does his own movie reviews and stuff like that, and we're going to talk about The Disaster Artist, starring James Franco, and his brother, Dave Franco. I saw it this week. It's based on the guy, Tommy Wiseau, who oh, created the worst movie ever, according to everybody. <laughs> and you also saw it, did right? You, did you see that worst movie ever, by the way? Did you see it? Or? I have seen The Room. Okay. And let me rephrase that. I've seen as much as The Room as I can handle. <laughs> I saw the trailer for the room. That's all I could watch. It's like that was it. So. It's pretty bad, but the best part is watching like the highlight reels on YouTube because they'll just show all the best parts. Yeah. But in context, when you're watching the film, it's very slow. I got about 40 minutes into it, and I I bailed. Right. There were about 10 love scenes before that that were like completely <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> Hi, doggy. What did you think of the room? Let's start with that. I haven't seen the room. That's why I thought I'd ask if you've seen it because yeah. obviously, like, I went in not well, not. Having seen the film, I saw the trailer the day before I went to see it, and then right. so the trailer just was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why that was much, really. So, <laughs> have you ever seen any of those clips or anything like that? Like, yeah, but, like, honestly, all through the like, probably the last ten years of my life, people have always said to me, oh, just check out the room, watch it. I was like, but the thing is, like, like I said in my review, right? And when someone's telling you it's going to be a bad film, you don't want to go and watch it. You don't want to spend your time watching the bad film. So I didn't get around to seeing it. Yeah, I only saw like a two-minute trailer of the room, and that was it. It's pretty tough to watch by yourself. Oh, hi, Mark. I think the the trick with The Room is you need to watch it with a crowd who knows the movie. I haven't done that yet, and I apparently every week or every month in L.A. they do that. And tonight, Tommy Wiseau is going to be there, and he's going to do an appearance. Really? He just shows up, and he introduces the movie, and everybody just does their whole, like, what they used to do with, like, Rocky Horror Picture Show, where people would dress up and then throw things at the screen and shout everything out at the same time during the movie, and it becomes a communal experience. But wasn't it, this is one of the facts at the end of the film, wasn't it? It says that it's actually, it's made back, it's six million dollars, wasn't it? They said they've made <laughs> money yeah, which is amazing that's the thing about it but like statistically it's actually he's got his money back from what he invested in the film hasn't he so yeah so it's been a success it's you know that's another question if people enjoy it if people pay to see it if people are enjoying it on some level yeah is it bad I think the enjoying the level like you see at the end of the disaster artists the way they enjoy the end of that film when they're watching the cinema I think that's how people do enjoy it they, yeah. they're laughing at it. it's, it's, it's a comedy isn't it really so it, it really it's an unintentional comedy exactly <laughs> I don't know how that happens but <laughs> apparently like Tommy Wiseau is so non-self aware that's that's like the perfect recipe for something so terrible it's good again it's like the uncanny valley of bad he's somehow I, gotten out of it I think that's the cool thing about it because it's like it was it was there to like just basically criticize how bad it was but i think that was the good thing about the film it had this like warp to it it was like it was celebrating the film's badness wasn't it that's yeah. what it was doing it was yeah. celebrating how bad it was so and the, the thing about the disaster artist that i found fascinating is that and i think this is what james franco says that why he made the movie is because he doesn't consider himself any different than tommy wiseau he's like i went to la i put all my eggs in this basket i wanted to do the thing and the passion is there the willingness the drive is there but maybe not so much the talent Yes. <laughs> but he's the same on like every level. Like, Tommy Wiseau is a legitimate artist because he's created something that people yeah. enjoy, whether yeah. it was his intention or not. And what's really mysterious about it as well, which I really thought you didn't find out at the end of the film, like where this guy came from, where he got his money from, because those, those are questions that go on throughout the film, aren't they? Yeah. And you never find out. Even today, no one knows where he's from. <laughs> where he got his money. Yeah, it's a mystery. Again, like I think even James Franco said that like that's not the important thing. It's the fact that this exists in it. But I find that very funny because he, to this day, Tommy Wiseau will not admit it. You ask him how old he is, and he's like, how old I look? <laughs> he's just got that weird, bizarre way about him. You know, you ask him where he's from, he says he's from New Orleans. That's it, New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. But he's got like an Eastern European accent. He's like, oh, American guy from New Orleans. <laughs> Let's go play football. You know, you're like, Ugh. And then, of That's course... A very good impression, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, I think I'm doing my impression of James Franco's impression. The thing I liked about James Franco's characterization is that he actually made him a person. He made Tommy yeah. Wiseau a simple pathetic character even I, I, think, I think this is one of james franco's best roles he's done i think he's just like he, he pulled it off so well doesn't he yeah yeah just the physicality i mean he like changed his body like the way he carried himself everything he, about even the eye thing was he, he must have had like prosthetics on because one of his eyes looked like it's just yeah he, he went like full on with the whole like characterization didn't he so yeah and that, that was like really interesting about that character that he could make us feel for such a bizarre guy i mean dave franco was pretty good too that the way he yeah. played off him there was like a love affair <clears throat> going on between the two of them which was like maybe like James Franco's own addition to the like the, the story but it was, it was really interesting because Tommy Wiseau is this enigmatic figure <laughs> it was like like what does who is this guy like <laughs> 
he's he's not married never married or, uh, he's just such a mysterious guy isn't he so. yeah so like it was interesting that ta- that uh james franco would add that level of depth to his character which was another I, like added meta layer because it's also his brother i think that's what it works so well because obviously that, that brotherly relationship as well and i think that was that was a good part of the film there it's actually those two in the film like they, it's just, they create this really good friendship didn't they really i mean that the chemicals was really believable didn't it yeah that was the thing i can see how these guys would be friends and to this day yeah. apparently they're still making movies together they're still working they are yeah yeah. But overall, the movie was very funny. It's, it's a tough task to take a movie about the guy who's made the worst movie and make it actually a good movie. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose, absolutely. I mean, the whole cinema, when I went to see it, was just like, they were just, you know, roaring with laughter. It's just, and the thing is, like, what I noticed as well, I think because I haven't seen the room, there's people laughing at things that I didn't think were that funny, but people were actually, like, hysterical about it. I think, okay, that must be something, like, something that happened in the room that yeah. they, they've seen and I don't know about. So I would like to see it again, but I would think I'd like to see the room first if I dare watch it. So, right. <laughs> so I would recommend just watching maybe the highlight reel of the room because the getting yeah, through that. the room is difficult. But getting to those points, it's kind of worth it. I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but at the end of the movie where they showed the side by sides of the recreation of cool. the scenes and the original yeah. scene. You got 10! me apart, Lisa! The actress who played Lisa, I mean, she, if you listen to her voice, she seems to like got the tone and the actual, like, the length of the sentence is completely correct. She nailed that one, she did. I don't know who played her, but uh, whoever played the character Lisa, she's, she pretty much imitated what the other actress was doing. It was brilliant. So Yeah, I was really impressed with how accurate those recreations were. Yeah. I mean, it is true that apparently, you know, Tommy Wiseau was walking around naked <coughs> in a sock to, like, direct those scenes. Or, <laughs> like, they had two cameras. They had a film camera and a digital camera next to it. That was just insane. It's like that's so funny. He yeah. just didn't, he didn't know how to make a film, did he? So that was just that was the best thing about it. He just had no idea. He just went. He had this money, this unlimited amount of money, and just, he just went to make a film. It's pure like someone going to Hollywood, making a movie, isn't that? It's it. It's, it's the dream, isn't it? And he did it. And somehow yeah, he exactly. he realized the American dream. He realized the Hollywood dream of, of becoming this celebrated artist. And, and I think that's why it becomes really admirable after. I mean, it's like you watch, you think, oh, this guy's just really not. He hasn't. He doesn't know what he's doing. But then you got to think, he's he's just following his dream. He's he's doing what. I've, loads of other people do when they go to like Hollywood and move to Los Angeles for he, but he just went he just now he had loads of money he, he went and did it and that was it so yeah so he got to like respect him in that kind of way I know it's like a piece of crap that he made but <laughs> there's so much passion in that piece in that of crap, piece of crap. That I think that might be what people gravitate to the fact that yeah. it's so earnest it's so completely sincere and it so hits all of the wrong notes possible I don't know how you do that I don't know how you know in the movie Mark is telling a story about a woman getting beaten and Tommy Wiseau's <laughs> character he's like huh <laughs> what a story, Mark. You know, like, <laughs> what a story, Mark. <laughs> This is like completely. I, I think as well the imitation of was it is it a James Dean film part wasn't it? it was one life with James Dean film. Like even imitating that and doing another film was just kind of like that. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, you know, Tommy Wiseau, he he had his vision and it's worked out for the best. Like he's obviously he's making profit now from it, so he's, he's it's the best thing he ever done. So yeah, it's the best yeah. thing probably happened to all of the people that were involved in that. Well, and James Franco is really building a name for himself as a filmmaker. The movie yeah. itself I thought was good. I thought. It was funny. I didn't think it was anything like earth shattering, but I thought that the way they sort of compressed Tommy's drive and life into a nice 90 minute package without giving away too much, they sort of accelerated how people went com- from completely baffled by the room to loving the room. They, they sort of compressed that into like a movie length sequence, which is a little bit of creative license, but I get it. I get like how <laughs> that took years. It didn't take one yeah. sh- viewing of the movie. It took it's like four or five years before people were like, you have to see this movie. It's, it's freaking <laughs> crazy. I would go and see it again. I would see it again, I reckon. It's, it's, it's a cringeworthy film because you think this this actually happens. And that's what that's what makes it so hilarious because you're thinking it's, it's not, I don't know, it's just like in standard comedy film where someone's written the parts. This this stuff actually happened. And that's, that's what makes it absolutely hilarious. And you, it does, you sit in your seat just cringing a little bit, doesn't it? So Cringe comedy genre. Uh, exactly. It works. It, it really does work. And, and from what I heard, James Franco remained in character as Tommy Wiseau while directing the movie. So, no. So, like, like Jim Carrey did on that, um, that film, was it? Man on the that Moon. Film There's a documentary so, on, on Netflix right now about that. I saw it. It's, it's, it's good, a good documentary, wasn't it? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I did see the preview, and I, I'm gonna, it's okay. on my list. I recommended this, and it's like, yeah, this 
just it's, it's a really I'm not want to ruin it for you, but it's it's, it's really worth watching. It's, it's, it's just a really good it's a really good watch. It's great. I actually remember when Milos Forman was filming Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey. Every day on the entertainment news magazine shows, they were like, Jim Carrey is rushed to the hospital on the set of Man on the Moon. Jim Carrey <laughs> like gets arrested or whatever like whatever was happening on the set. And apparently they were they were collecting it all like filming their own documentary. Were... It's it's quite good because like I think what it is it's you sort of like see look at how Jim Carrey, what he's become now like how he is now. It's almost like from that movie he's become what he is now. It, is, so it seems like because he went so deep into character when he came out, he sort of didn't know who he was when he came out. It's ever since then he's just been a bit. You have to watch it. It's just it's very insightful. It really is. That's next on my list. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, hey, no worries. We... Thanks for time. Thank you. Where can we find you? Mostly in the UK, but I'm also on the internet as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, I've got a Facebook page um, where I upload my videos mostly, um, which is Shawnee Wild Films. That's S H A U N Y W A. In case, yeah, some people can't figure it. It's a funny name, it's an odd name. Um, or you can find me on Twitter as well. So, just Facebook or Twitter, that's some place you can really find me. So, we'll find you there. If this is your first time here, remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Turn on those notifications. This has been Sean Troke or Shawnee Wa. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle, you bro in the know with the fro. And I'll see you later. See you later. <laughs> 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 <laughs>